Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're gonna be talking a shady talk. Sarah Jessica Parker, Kim Cattrall. It's the story that keeps on giving and it is a never ending, trust you me. What is going on now? Like you would think, well, Kim Cattrall left Sex and City, it's over, why, why rehash it all again? Well, apparently Sarah Jessica Parker has more receipts to throw into the fire and share with us about uh, what she alleges true reasons why Kim Cattrall did not end up doing Sex in the City 3 or even possibly uh, after that, the and just like that series. So what's the T you might ask? Well, first subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. You can push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. Again, access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday and you're all invited to join the live chats and be in my video. So cue in the chats. Hello, everybody. How's it going, my loves? Spill it, Jacob. Thanks, Debs. You're, 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 you're a team player. Thank you. Okay. You guys. So, okay. According to, uh, who am I reading? TVonline.com, right? We are doing TV, uh, TVline.com. They are reporting that Sarah Jessica Parker sets the record straight about Kim Cattrall's stormy exit from Sex and the City franchise. Here they are, the two ladies. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, just my opinion. Nothing I say is rooted in facts or truth, so don't shoot the messenger. Everything is allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Sir Jessica Parker wants to clear the air, allegedly, in a new interview with a Hollywood reporter. The and Just Like That star opens up about her rift with former Sex and the City co-star Kim Cattrall. So... Uh, she says, allegedly, it's very hard to talk about the situation with Kim. Parker says to the Hollywood Reporters, award chat, a podcast. I've been so careful about not ever wanting to say anything that is unpleasant because it's not the way I like to conduct conversations that are as complicated as this. I think the best way to do it, honestly, is to kind of run through how it happened. And then she starts running through how it happened. So we've heard Kim Cattrall give interviews on television, you know, in different, uh, on different shows and different time frames several years ago about the reasons why she alleged she did not want to do Sex in the City 3, the movie. And to the best of my belief, it always appeared to me as if Kim Cattrall were saying in all of those interviews, allegedly, I never wanted to be in Sex in the City 3. I felt treated poorly by Sarah Jessica Parker and the other girls. Uh, I It was never about the money for me. I just feel I'm done with this character. It's over. I don't want to play it anymore. Maybe she didn't like the script either. But she just kind of always pointed out that she does not like Sarah Jessica Parker, that Sarah Jessica Parker treated her poorly. And so she just didn't feel like she belonged there anymore and moving on. And she kept repeating, it was never about the money. Because the reporters would ask her, like, hey, you know, there are rumors that you were, like, complicated, that it's, oh, she's being a diva again, she wants more again. And then Kim Cattrall was like, no, never. Ne me? Who? Me? No, never. It was never about the money. It was about the respect. Bottom line. Paraphrasing here, obviously. Now, Sarah Jessica Parker jumps in and says, oh, hold it. Okay, you want to play that? But why, is she, why did she wait, like, 10 years to come out with this? Why now is my question. But, so she said, what follows is Parker's side of the story, which begins in 2017, when Sex in the City 3 was famously scrapped. Cattrall has previously maintained that she said no to doing the movie. It's a great part, she told Pierce Morgan in 2017. I played it, past the finish line, and then some. And I loved it. And another actress should play it. Now, Parker, however, insists that Warner Brothers didn't feel comfortable, she says, allegedly, agreeing to Cattrall's demands and, as a result, decided not to move forward with the sequel. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Cattrall made her participation in Sex and the City 3 contingent on Warner Brothers greenlighting a separate project of hers. What does this mean? This means that, allegedly, Kim Cattrall said no to Sex and the City 3, well, 
let's just put it this way. Allegedly, Kim Cattrall said to Warner Brothers, I'm going to do Sex in the City 3 if you green light a project that I want to do, whether it's something she wanted to produce, a movie she wanted to act in, write, star, co-star, whatever. So she was like, hey, I'm going to do Sex in the City 3 if you rub my back as well and you let me do the movie I want to do. And plus the money that she wanted for Sex and the City 3. So allegedly, Warner Brothers said, no, we're not going to green light your other project. And then allegedly, Kim Cattrall got really angry because of this and said, okay, well then, you know what? No, then I'm not going to do anything. Bye. Allegedly. Now, um, Sarah Jessica Parker then says, we didn't do the movie because we didn't want to do it without Kim. And the studio didn't want to do it. So it fell apart. Parker explains, it wasn't that she said no to the movie. It's that the studio said no to the movie, which, you know, happens. And every actor has a right to ask for things to have, a contract that feels good to them. I never would have disputed that because, frankly, that's not my business. Were we disappointed? Sure. But it happens. So this is kind of the point here that Sarah Jessica Parker is trying to say, allegedly, hey, Kim Cattrall is lying to you. It's not that she didn't want to do it, point, period, blank, basta, for no reason other than just like being angry with me. She didn't want to do it because Warner Brothers didn't want a green light on a project of hers in return. Now, who are we to believe? All allegedly, Silala, thank you, all allegedly. Unbox Beauty says, hmm, they didn't want to do it without Kim. Hmm. <laughs> well, they're doing it just like that without Kim. I'm pretty much over these feuding celebs, says Debbie. I know, we've we've had our fair share of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, and it's been exciting, but at the same time, also ridiculous to follow it for six weeks, and then some. And some YouTube channels are still going on about it, really, reviewing everything in the, in the trial yet again, over and over and over again. I mean, we're doing the same rehashing all of this. since It's been going on since years. Debbie says they need an intervention. Put them in a room with a camera. Very much like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. And uh, Madame says, I heard that Kim wanted Sam to evolve as a character, but the studio didn't. Most of the, uh, Alexa says, most of the Sex and the City team were on Sarah Jessica Parker's side. Interesting point about uh, Kim Cattrall wanting the Samantha character to evolve and then um, and, the, and them or the studio not letting it happen. I don't know if that's true. That's all, also obviously alleged. But I, cu I could see that. I mean, the way that Kim Cattrall talks in her interviews, she always does come across as somebody who's very thoughtful, very well read uh, into a lot of different things. If I'm really, really honest... She does come across as very sensitive in every interview I've seen her in. Very sensitive. Like, you got to be very cautious. She's going to smile and be polite. But then when she leaves the room, you don't know if she's, if she's angry about what she said and how you said things. She does give me that vibe. I love her to bits. I love Kim Cattrall to bits. But she does give me that vibe of like... You got to walk around eggshells when you're with her. Um, So, but, well, it seems like if Warner Brothers would have produced her project, Kim Cattrall would still be in Sex and the City and she would still be in, well, and she would be in And Just Like That, which would not be called In Just Like That because if she were in it from the get-go, it would have been just called Sex and the City Season 7. But she has this, her, you know, there's a way about Kim Cattrall when she talks. She's hurt. I'm not talking about interviews about sex in the city. No matter what she talks about. Uh, there's this one video I saw on YouTube of her going to one of these places that all like famous people go to. Like this little tiny was it Criterion or something room where like DVDs and Blu-rays are in and then like they ask these celebrities to, to choose their favorite movies. So she chose hers. And of course they were all from like, you know, like super either underground or like masterpieces of cinema, you know? And so she's, she's choosing them and talking about them, but the way that she talks, she's hurt. She, there's something hurt about her. Uh, 
very, very fragile about her, very like a, a self-aware of the hurt. It's a very complex person, I, I believe. Uh, when, 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 I, when I see her talk, love her to bits. And quite frankly, I think I, I could deal with it. I could deal with, with all the psychology there because I'm used to stuff like that. But I can see how she's not easy to deal with. I can see. I, Alexa, I wouldn't say broken, but there's that kind of way of hanging on to words. I think she hangs to words very much. Uh, maybe the woman is sick and tired of it all. They've been milking it, says Jesus. Uh, again, Jesus, listen. Interviews where she is not talking about sex in the city. In, completely talking about other projects she did, talking about other... Uh, stories, questions, books, no matter what you talk to her about, there's something, how she hangs on to words, she weighs them with a lot of heft, a lot of psychological heft. And I have the feeling it's really easy to hurt her. So, um, but Holy Grace says, to be honest, I don't think any of the Sex and the City are easy to deal with. <laughs> you might be you might have a point there. Uh, they they all seem like they they have a, quite a bit of, of baggage uh, that they're carrying around with themselves. Uh, just my opinion only, obviously. And um, I see what you mean, Jacob says. Love DIY, right? I mean, it could be trauma. I don't know if she's carrying that from her youth. She slows down her talking uh, in an interview and. Then there's that, you know, a little bit Lady Diana type of, you know, the head is down and, you know, like, poor me, you know, but I tried my best and, oh, and you're weighing your, you know, and she's, you can see that she's weighing every word you're giving her and, and, and she's contemplating whether or not those words are hurting her or not. It's, it's, it's very fascinating to observe. Um, this is just my opinion only, obviously, but uh, it, it, it does feel like it's you you got to be very delicate and very, very cautious with Kim. Um, yes, Holy Grace, she's very well-spoken and intellectual. It's very refreshing, in my opinion. I never said the opposite of that. I'm talking on another level right now. Uh, not talking about the intellect here. I'm talking about something underneath there that gives me vibes of being hurt. She feels pushed away. Yes, Tina. Whenever she talks, she always feels like she's pushed away. And she gives me the feeling that she's pushing away. And it, 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 and it always feels like you have to fight to find a way to get her back in, to, to make her feel like wanted and wanted uh, and, 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 and desired. And it's okay, Kim. Love you. Oh, my gosh. Wonderful. Praise, 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 praise. Wow, 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 praise, more praise, love, 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 you know, and, and still you're going to get that, you know, and there's that. And boy, that can be difficult if you're not used to that type of uh, psyche. It can be difficult. That's just my opinion. OK, because and as I said, uh, distant, Tina says there she's she's slipping away and you always have to kind of run after her now again. This is not something bad. I can see how this can be complicated to some Hollywood people who are used to business, business, business. Quick, 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 quick. Money, 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 money. And then you're dealing with an emo highly sensitive, with a high uh, emotional intelligence, like Kim Cattrall. And you can't do the busy, 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 quickie, quickie, quickie. You got to listen and you got to be delicate, you know? So obviously... <laughs> I mean, she's been around the block a couple of times. The woman has been in show business for long enough. She knows how these things work, obviously. But when she's like, when I'm done, I'm done. Love DIY says it's a hallmark of child trauma, but it's okay. We all have some. We all have some, right? Uh, and you know, I'm a therapist. So yes, I know my love. I know you are. And so this is something like you, you, you empathize. You empathize, you listen, you feel, and then you evolve. Uh, but uh, you know how you know how it is sometimes in Hollywood. People can be very rough, and they can be very like, "Okay, honey, do this or bye," you know. And then and then she's like, "Oh, 
like, wow, that was hurtful. No, no. Who, who do you think you are? And then, you know, she might have said that no. And so I'm just saying it's like a communication thing. And there's there's something between like mathematical money communication and then there's emotional communication. <laughs> they very rarely, if ever, align. So um, I don't blame Sarah Jessica Parker for this particular instance. Now, do I think Sarah Jessica Parker can be a mean girl? <sighs> that she can be complicated, I can kind of see that. But mean girl, no. Maybe because I'm a man and not a woman. If I were a woman, I would feel differently. But I think Sarah Jessica Parker has her issues as well, like we all do. I'm the first one. Issues? Hi. Yeah, that's me. Jacob. issues here. Hello. Uh, so just, you know, admit it and you move on and you evolve from there. But that Sarah Jessica Parker might have felt like bad because Kim Cattrall was stealing all the scenes. I mean, it was Sarah Jessica Parker's show, Sex and the City, right? But from season one, you know, Kim Cattrall was the more experienced actress, was more, you know, there, more charismatic. Kim Cattrall has more charisma on camera than Sarah Jessica Parker. She just does. Now, I can see how Sarah could have been, like, jealous, envious. Oh, everybody laughs at her jokes. Oh, she steals every scene. Oh, wait, but this TV show is about me, not about her. So I, I, I can see the rivalry there. Oh, totally. I can totally see it because, I mean, Kim Cattrall, the, she exudes charisma out of every single pore of her body. She's gorgeous to look at photogenic, flirts with the camera like nobody else, delivers the lines like nobody else, flirts with the camera like nobody else. I mean, she is born to be an actress. Of course, I could see other chicks feeling threatened by her. Of course, I can see that happen. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, girls, you've been doing this for six seasons plus two movies. Get over yourselves. It's enough already. Get over yourselves. You've been working together for so many years. You must have found some way to deal with each other in a, in a respectful manner without all these uh, bickering. I mean, each and every one of them won their Emmys, whatever awards, you know, like they've, they've all been acknowledged uh, for, 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 for their acting skills in, in Sex and the City. So it's not like one of them was like, oh, no, they did me dirty. They did me dirty. No, they, they were all acknowledged. They, they're all wonderful. They're all great, you know. So anyway, Holy Grace says, I can never stop staring at Kim and Kristen Davis too in the original Sex and the City. Just so beautiful. Kim Cattrall is a magnet. Magnet. You're born that way. You just are, you know. Star quality. This is love DIY. Star quality. That's the bottom line. Both of these ladies have star quality. Hug it out. Hash it out, but hug it out and work together again. Because I, I do believe you two have chemistry on set. Even though you might not like each other, you have chemistry on both of you. So enough already. Clear up the, all the stuff and deal with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comments down below. Subscribe. Never give up on love.